The fundamental unit of organic stereochemistry is the stereocenter, and in its simplest form, it's represented by a tetrahedral carbon that bears four different substituents. The molecule bromochlorofluoromethane would have this carbon as a stereocenter. Sometimes we use the word chirocarbon, or sometimes we use the word stereogenic center to mean the same thing. By permuting, or in other words, exchanging two of the groups on a stereocenter, will generate a stereoisomer, and that's in fact the definition. So let's exchange the bromine and the hydrogen on the stereocenter in bromochlorofluoromethane. So we'll draw this structure with the fluorine, carbon, and chlorine all on the plane, and then we'll have the bromine coming out, and we'll have the hydrogen going back. I'll leave it as an exercise for you to convince yourself that the new structure is not superimposable on the original, but that these two are related as mirror images. Non-superimposable mirror images are what we know as enantiomers. Since the process generated a new stereoisomer, we've met the definition of a stereocenter. There are several ways to draw stereocenters and represent their three-dimensional geometry. I'll show you two of them here. The first is the line angle drawing that you've already encountered. The green highlight shows the carbon, carbon, carbon backbone. Notice that in the green highlight, those bonds are of normal thickness. Any bond that's drawn as being normal in its weight or thickness is a bond that's in the plane of the screen. Whenever we draw bonds that are coming out of the plane of the screen, we use the wedge, and if we're representing bonds that are heading back into the plane of the screen, we use the dash. The Fisher projection is a second way to represent three-dimensional geometry. Here we're going to draw the carbon backbone vertically, and we'll draw the substituents horizontally. The relationship between the Fisher projection and the line angle drawing can best be seen by looking at a three-dimensional model. The stereocenter is represented by this carbon atom. The line of sight for the Fisher projection is along this direction. Our eye will be positioned here, and we'll be viewing down the tetrahedral carbon atom that way. A reference plane might give us a little bit of help. That reference plane is going to be perpendicular to the line of sight, so if we turn on that line of sight again, and now reorient this, so we're viewing down the line of sight, this is the Fisher projection. The carbon atom backbone is vertical, the hydroxyl substituent is horizontal and to the right, the hydrogen substituent is horizontal and to the left, and you can see that that matches the line angle drawing and the Fisher projection drawing that were in the notes. Each stereocenter has two configurations, and these configurations are realized by exchanging any two substituents, such as the hydroxyl group and the hydrogen atom. Since there are two configurations for each stereocenter, we'd like a way to name one configuration compared to the other. So for the configuration shown here, where the hydroxyl group is coming out, we'd like to have a name for it. This is called a stereochemical descriptor, and the name we'll give it will either be R or S. And here's how we assign R and S to a stereochemical configuration. We begin by prioritizing the substituents according to atomic number. And so you can see for this stereocenter, the oxygen has the highest atomic number. It gets the priority number one. In trying to decide the next highest priority, we notice that two of the substituents are attached to the stereocenter with carbon atoms that have the same atomic mass. In a case like this, we must look for the first point of difference. Notice that the aldehyde group, the CHO group, which has this structure here, carbon doubly bonded to oxygen with a hydrogen atom, is represented for the purposes of assigning stereochemical priority as being a carbon that's connected to two oxygens. So we consider this double bond as having a carbon with two oxygens. And that now allows us to assign the first point of difference because the CH2OH group is going to have two hydrogen atoms. And so notice there's a point of difference for the aldehyde group, an oxygen, versus the CH2OH, a hydrogen. So we can assign priority number two to the aldehyde group and priority number three to the CH2OH group, leaving priority number four to be assigned as this hydrogen atom. And now in order to assign the stereochemical descriptor, we need a view in which our eye is positioned to the carbon atom, and in the back, we're looking straight down the priority number four bond. 
Since the hydrogen atom has the lowest priority, we want a view down the carbon to hydrogen bond, and this is best seen with a three-dimensional representation. Here again is our stereo center. The lowest priority substituent is this hydrogen. Our line of sight is directed to the stereo center, then to the lowest priority substituent, so our eye will be positioned somewhere over here on the line of sight. When we reorient this so that we're looking down the line of sight, we then want to number the priorities. Our hydroxyl group is priority number one, this aldehyde group is number two, and the CH2 group is number three. Traveling from the highest priority substituent to the next highest priority and the third highest priority, we travel in the clockwise direction. The clockwise direction is assigned to the R configuration. If we had gone in the counterclockwise direction, we would have assigned this the S configuration. So in this webcast, we've introduced you to the stereo center. We've seen ways to represent the stereo center, and now we've been able to assign the configuration.